You're listening to another premier old-time radio program and also a proud member of the Blueberry community. Another Humphrey Cumberdella production. Out of the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. In the great light of early morning, the young woman and the man stand at the finish line of the training track, their eyes intently following the racehorse as the jockey brings it down the home stretch. The young woman holds the stopwatch tensely in her hands. The horse rushes past the finish line, and the young woman snaps the control lever on the watch. The jockey slows his mount down and brings it back to the finish line at a slow trot. Easy, boy. Easy. How do we do, Miss Peters? 147 and a half, Al. Nice riding, kid. Well, thanks, Mr. Connors. A mile and a sixteenth and 147 and a half. That's not bad, eh, Miss Peters? Not bad. That's darn good, Al. That's White Star's best time to date. Well, Mr. Connors, what do you think of it now? Miss Peters, I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it myself. White Star was a complete washout last season as a two-year-old. You know his record. He didn't show in the money once. I really figured I pulled a smart deal when I sold him to you. <laughs> Sorry for your bargain now, huh? Well, a bargain's a bargain. Anyway, this was just a trial run. I'll hold off crying into my beer until I see how he makes out at a money race. Well, you'll do plenty of crying, Mr. Connors. White Star's going to be a real champion this season. That's right. With Al Russo up, he's a sure winner. With anybody up, Miss Peters. This pony's got what it takes. Say, I better get him back to the stable for a rub down. I'll see you later. All right, Al. Wow. Yeah, Mr. Connors. Hold it a minute, will you? I'm going back to the stable. I'll walk with you. Sure. Do you mind, Miss Peters? No, go right ahead. And don't forget you're buying me champagne at the clubhouse if White Star wins tomorrow. Champagne it'll be. All right, Al. Let's go. Right. What are you trying to pull, Al? What do you mean, Nick? You know what I mean. You know just what I mean. You let this nag out all the way this morning on that track. You were riding in full... What was the idea? I just wanted to see what he could really do. Yeah? Why? Just curious. I told you to hold him back, didn't I? I got you the job with that Peters dame, so you do what I tell you. White Star wins when I say he wins, and not before. He comes in under the wire when the odds are where I want them. You understand that? Well, yeah, sure, Nick, just as you say, but... And, Nick, one thing bothers me. What? What did you have done to this hay burner? Last season, he didn't have no more chance than a snowball in the Sahara. You dumped him on Helen Peters because he was a flop. Now, all of a sudden, he runs like man of war. What's the angle, Nick? I'm paying you to ride White Star the way I say to ride him. Is that right, Al? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So you just do that. I'm not paying you to ask questions. Remember that. You get too nosy, and instead of riding that nag, you're liable to end up jockeying a hearse. Remember that, Al. I'll get it, Denny. Very well, sir. Hello? Captain Drummond? Yes? I gotta talk to you. I'm in a jam. Who is this? Russo. My name's Al Russo. I'm jockeying out at the Westwood track. Just what sort of jam are you in, Mr. Russo? I'm riding White Star in the fourth race this afternoon. I'm out at the track now. I'll be going to the post in an hour, and I, I gotta talk to you before the race. Can you make it out here fast? You still haven't told me what this is all about. Well, you got to come. I'll meet you in front of the grandstand. Section C. You got that? Section C. Mr. Russo, I hadn't planned to spend the afternoon out at the track, so if you expect me to alter my schedule, you'll have to be a bit more explicit. Just why do you want me to meet you? Well, look, I can't talk here. I think they spotted me coming into this booth. They? Who are they? The ones who are going to kill me. What? That's right, Captain Drummond. I've got to get protection. I can't go to the cops. You can save me if I talk to you before White Star goes to the post. I'll be waiting for you where I said. Now get out here as soon as you can. Hello, Mr. Russo. Hello. Hello. Denny. Denny. Yes, sir. What is it, sir? Hurry, bring the car around front. We're going out to the Westwood racetrack. Westwood racetrack? But I thought we There's were There's a change to... in our plans, Denny. But, sir, why this sudden and new interest in the horses? It's not the horses. It's my usual and old interest, murder. Now hurry, get the car. I'll be out in a moment. Thank <laughs> you.
Well, sir, we've been standing here in front of the grandstand for ten minutes and no sign of your harried Mr. Russo. You know what, sir? What, Denny? This may be nothing more than some sort of practical joke. Maybe there is no such person as Al Russo. There's an Al Russo, all right. How do you know, sir? I checked the racing page in the newspaper before we came out here. Just as he told me over the phone, he's scheduled to ride White Star in the fourth race. Well, if he's going to show up here, he'd better make it soon. The fourth race will begin in a few moments. Come on, Denny. Where are we going, sir? To the paddock. Russo should be there. Maybe he could... Pardon me. Yes? You're uh, Captain Drummond. Yes, Yes, sir. Hadn't we better hurry? It's almost post time. Please, I must talk to you, Captain Drummond. Uh, Sorry, miss. Perhaps later. Al sent me. Al Russo? Yes. Where is he? He couldn't meet you here. Well, where is he? He was afraid to come out into the open. And just who are you? I'm Al's wife, Captain Drummond. He's in trouble. So he said over the phone. Well, he's got to talk to you. He wouldn't tell me what it was, but I know it's something terrible. You will help him, won't you? I'll do everything I can. Thank you, thank you. Now, where can I speak to your husband, Mrs. Russo? Over there. At that line of telephone booths under the grandstand, he's waiting for you. He's in the third booth. Al said I should wait out here and see if they follow you to him. All right, Mrs. Rousseau. We'll be back to talk to you after I see your husband. Yes, I'll be right here. Come along, Denny. I'm with you, sir. Third booth. Here it is, Denny. What? It's empty, sir. There's no one in there. Yes. But Mrs. Russo said he was waiting here for you. Denny, Mrs. Russo isn't a woman of her word for more reasons than one. What do you mean by that, sir? Look over there, where we were talking to Mrs. Russo. Why, why she's not there. She's disappeared. Exactly. Come on, Denny, hurry. Where to now? The paddock. What do you suppose this is all about? Why did Mrs. Russo tell us her husband was in that telephone booth and then vanish herself? Now, I think that's your answer, Denny. Oh, I say, they're calling the horses to the post of the fourth race. Exactly. And there goes White Star to the starting gate with the others. That's your answer, all right. We were tricked by Mrs. Russo. It was a stall to keep us away from her husband until the race began. This is Gilson Rand, Westwood, bringing you a description of the fourth race. A $7,000 first handicap. The horses are at the starting gate. Number five lucky boy is acting up a bit at the post. Now they've got him back in line. And they're off. The fast main start. Trying to tight back as they move down the stretch toward the first turn. Now out in front by a length, it's Lucky Boy, followed by Sunrise. With White Star now moving into third position. And as they round the first turn, it's Lucky Boy still out in front. Now by two lengths over Sunrise. And coming up fast, it's White Star. Trailing in the pack behind the leaders of Fly by Night. Full time, only star and Peters in first. Yes, sir. This way, Miss Peters. Captain Drummond, I'm Helen Peters. How do you do? I've just learned from the track officials that my jockey, Al Russo, was poisoned. Yes, that's what happened. I've been asked to handle the investigation. I don't know whether you were informed of the matter, but Russo called me earlier this afternoon. Al called you? Yes. But why? He wanted me to help save his life. Miss Peters, what do you know about Al Russo? Nothing, except that he was a good jockey, Captain Drummond. Don't understand. Why should anyone want to murder Al? I was about to ask you the same question. As far as I know, he didn't have any enemies. Uh, Miss Peters, uh, according to Russo's wife... His wife? Yes, a young lady about your height, blonde. But I didn't know Al was married. He didn't tell me. Denny, I doubt seriously if the young woman was Russo's wife. While you went for Miss Peters, I checked with the other jockeys here. As far as they knew, Russo was single. That mysterious woman was just playing her part in the murder game. Captain Drummond... Yes, Miss Peters. I was with Al in the paddock when he mounted White Star. He seemed perfectly well then. He was at that point. But they said he was poisoned. That's correct. How? 
No one was near him after he left the paddock for the starting gate. Russo's death was caused by a strong and swift-acting poison. That poison was injected into his system. Injected? Denny, let me have that saddle. Yes, sir. The medical examiner found a puncture on the inside of Russo's right thigh. Here's the saddle, sir. Hold it up a bit, Denny, so Miss Peters can see. Right, sir. Miss Peters, you'll notice this sticking out of the right side of White Star's saddle. The knee. The murder weapon. There's a hypodermic sewed on the inside of the saddle there. The hypodermic contains the poison. Who could have put that into the saddle? I have the slightest idea. Miss Peters, when is White Star scheduled to race again? Next week at Overton Park, I've entered him in the Wilton Handicap. But with Al gone, I've no jockey. Al could handle White Star. He got more out of him than any other rider. Just now, Miss Peters, I'm not concerned with White Star winning. I just want to make sure that he runs at Overton Park next week. It may be our only chance to catch a killer. You got another jockey, Mr. Connors. What you got, Dave? Teddy Lynch. Lynch is a smart kid, Mr. Connors. He knows how to ride to win. He can bring White Star under the wire in the Wilson Handicap next week. What about Drummond? Well, he and that stooge of his are hanging around the stable all the time. This is the first chance I got to come over here. What are you going to do about Lynch? You won't be able to get to him with Drummond around. I'm not getting to Lynch. You mean you're going to let White Star come in for a win? Not on your life. I told you I was holding that nag from a win until I get the odds up high enough for a big killing. And next week they won't be anywhere near where I want them. Yeah, Mr. Connors, but how are you going to stop it? When are you taking White Star to Overton Park? Tuesday night. You drive over by Route 6? Yeah. All right. Here's what you do. Ten miles outside of town, there's an intersection. Halsey Corners, it's called. I know the place. Okay. You turn right onto 15A and go along for seven miles. Then you come to a sign that says, The Yokes. It's a farm a little off the main road. The Yokes? Right. I'll meet you there. Everything will be set for the nag. Pulling in reverse, eh, Mr. Connors? What do you think? I got too much invested to let White Star win yet. Got everything straight, Dave? Sure, but what about Drummond? What about him? Maybe he'll take it into his head to follow the truck. Huh. If he does, it'll be the last following he'll ever do. Don't worry about Drummond. I'll have everything set for him, too. Take it easy, boy. Now, easy, easy. Seems to be a little nervous tonight, Dave. I think White Star kind of misses out on us, Peters. I don't usually have this trouble loading them on the truck this way, boy. Come on. Easy, now. Good evening, Miss Peters. Oh, Captain Drummond, I thought you and Teddy Lynch went on to Overton. I changed my mind. Denny and I have some work to do. I sent Lynch on ahead. By the way, what do you think of Lynch? Seems to be a fine jockey. I told you he'd work out. We both may get what we want at Overton. You were victory for White Star, and I, Al Russo's murderer. All set, Miss Peters. Well, then you better get started, Dave. Uh, sure thing. Just as soon as I get this ramp up, I'm off. You found any trace of that uh, woman who said she was Mrs. Russo? Not a sign of her. But I have an idea she'll show up sooner or later. All right, ready to get underway, Miss Peters. All right, Dave. I'll see you tomorrow morning at Overton. Uh, good night. Good night. I'd drive you back to town, Captain Drummond. Uh, no, thank you very much. Here comes Denny with my car now. All set, sir? Yes, yes, Denny. See you at Overton, Miss Peters. All right, Denny, let's go. Right, sir. Keep on the tail of that truck. Right, sir. Not too close. I don't want him to suspect he's being followed. Well, so far he's sticking to the route, Captain Drummond. Yes, but it's still quite a way to Overton. What makes you think something surprising may happen? In the absence of clues, Denny, I have to fall back on hunches. Well, if you ask me, I think we're out on a wild uh, horse chase, if you'll pardon the pun. Uh, Slow down, Denny. Hmm? He's turning off the road. I say, perhaps you were right about that fellow, Dave, sir. That's not the way to Overton. Step on it, Denny. Get up to that intersection. Right, Now, take that turn fast. I don't want to lose track of that truck. Hold on, sir. Here we go. Ah, there he is, up ahead. He's picking up speed. Keep after him. I wonder where he's taking White Star. 
We should soon find out that... Jenny. What is it, sir? Look, look, that car pulling out up ahead. It's cutting across at us. Quick, swing off the road before we crash head on. <laughs> Denny. Oh, I, I'm all right, sir. It's just my arm. We're certainly lucky. We might have been killed. That apparently was their intention. You mean that wasn't an accident? Not by a long shot. That car was evidently waiting for us to come along. Someone had made preparations in the event the truck carrying White Star was tailed. At any rate, Denny, one of my hunches has been proven correct. No doubt about it, we were on the right track. Yes, but now, unfortunately, sir, we've been derailed. Only temporarily, Denny. Only temporarily. But what about the truck? We've lost it. Oh, I'm sure White Star will turn up at Overton safe and sound. Yes, but what about us? Well, first we get in touch with the local police and arrange for our sudden passing. Sudden passing? What do you mean, sir? We're dead, Denny. Dead? That's the way the newspapers will carry the story. Captain Hugh Drummond and Denny killed in auto crash. How does that sound to you? Frightful. What's the idea? I want our would-be assailants to think they were successful. It will make our work more simple. So, Denny, for the time being, we're dead. Very well, sir. I'm dead. Now, would you mind telling me just what work we corpses are to do? Denny, I'm afraid this is going to confound you even more. Go ahead, sir. But break it to me gently. You've heard the one about the horse of a different color? Continue. Well, Denny, we're setting out to find a horse of the same color. Dear, frankly, sir, it doesn't make one bit of sense. But, sense or no sense, I suppose we ghosts should stick together. All right, we'll try that barn first. Really, Captain Drummond, we're taking quite a gamble sneaking about farms in this fashion. We're liable to run up against a farmer who'll take us for trespassers and greet us with a load of buckshot. I'm afraid we'll just have to chance that. Very well, sir. But how long are we going to keep this prowling up? Until I find what we're looking for. I'm sure it's some place in this area. All right, open that door and we'll see what this barn has to offer. All right, come on. Close the door. Yes, sir. The horse stalls are over there. Let's go. Denny. What is it, sir? That horse in the end stall. Sir. Come on. Why, Captain Drummond, this horse, he has a white marking on his head, the same marking. Yes, it's White Star, all right, Denny. Oh, but, but I still don't understand. You said when you checked yesterday morning that White Star had arrived at Overton. So he did. Well, then who is this horse? White Star. Oh, now, really, sir, nothing can be in two different places at the same time. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? All right, Denny, all right. Here's the way I see it. This white star we're looking at is a ringer for the white star at Overton. Ringer? A ringer is a sort of stand-in, a replacement to be used at an arranged time. But why? Well, Denny, in horse racing, there's a very good reason, money. The two white stars are identical, probably, in all factors but one, speed. That's where the money angle is put to work. You remember we checked on White Star's past record. Yes, it was quite undistinguished. Exactly. No wins. The odds against White Star coming in first are great. Oh, I see, sir. If White Star wins, the one who bets on him will be richly rewarded. That's right, Denny. And the chances are that one of the White Stars stands a very good chance of winning. I say, Captain Drummond, do you suppose Miss Peters knows about this? From the way things look, it doesn't appear so. White Star was sold to her last season by Nick Connors. In the past, Connor's dealings in horse flesh have been on the shady side. Oh, then perhaps Connor's had something to do with Al Russo's murder. It's altogether likely, Denny. But we'll have to prove that by drawing Connor's out. How do you expect to accomplish that, sir? By seeing just how interested he is in the way White Star runs. Denny, we're getting this horse out of here. And then what? You and I are taking him to Overton to make an unauthorized switch in horses. Then we'll wait until tomorrow's race and see if we can encircle the murderers with our ringer. I say, Connors is here, sir. I saw him in a box at the other end of the grandstand. All right, Denny. 
Now, we'd better remain out of sight until after the race. I, uh, I saw Miss Peter's stable hand, Dave, too. He's wearing a bandage around his head as a result of that blow I delivered to him last night before we switched horses. Must be quite a headache, sir. But nothing, Denny, compared to the headache the state is going to give him when we wind this case up. You know, Captain Drummond, one thing bothers me. What's that? I wonder which of the two is the real white star, the one who ran so badly last season. We'll soon learn that, Denny. Ah, there they go. And as they come around the far turn, it's Seminole, still out in front by two lanes over Rocky Ridge, with Dusty King moving up to take third position of a wind song. Seminole has now extended his lead by three full lanes, and wait, there's White Star coming up fast on the inside. Yes, he's making his bid. White Star was pretty lynched up. He passes Dusty King to capture the number three spot, and he's still moving up. White Star, the 20 to 1 shot up there among the leaders, and this is around the turn into the home stretch. It's Seminole still in the lead, and, and there goes White Star past Rocky Ridge into second place, and he's still coming up fast. Jockey Teddy Lynch is pushing his mouth, pushing, pushing, and now it's White Star challenging Seminole, and he's up there. Seminole and White Star neck and neck. White Star and Seminole as they head for the finish line, and here they come. And Hello, Miss Peters. Nick. Nick, White Star won today. You don't say. I don't know how it happened. I can't figure it out. You can't, huh? I can. Nick, what's the matter? You're a lousy double-crosser. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? You. The dirtiest double-dealing dame on the face of the earth. That's what I'm talking about. Nick, I couldn't help it if White Star won today. He just ran well. White Star doesn't run that well. He hasn't got it in him. The ringer was in there today. What? Don't give me that what business. You were setting yourself up for some quick change and a run out. I got it all figured. Nick, you're wrong. I just I checked didn't... with the farm. The ringer wasn't there. You got him out. You pulled a double switch on me. No, no, honestly. We I were didn't going to know split it. a nice take, you and me. But you, you couldn't wait. You wanted to make a grab for yourself, just like Al Russo did. What made you think you'd get away with it? What made you think so? You're wrong, Nick. You're wrong. I didn't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I rig up a neat scheme. Nobody knows the connection between you and me. I rig it up neat so we can get out with a clean take. You sit high and dry. I get the dirty work done. I get rid of Russo. Then I put Drummond and that stooge of his out of the way. And all the time, all the time, you're setting me up for a lousy sucker. Nick, believe me, I didn't switch the horses. I had nothing to do Not with it. Not much you didn't. Please, you've got to believe get me. Get over there by the window. What? What are you going to do to me? I got another plan for you and me now. Only this time, it's sure to work. I'm seeing it with personally. You're going out that window. Nick! You're going out that window and smacking that lion face of yours. Stop moving! Nick, please, wait for me. Come on, get over the window. Nick, for heaven's sake, you've got to listen to me. Get over the window. Nick, get over the window. 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 Get we heard everything you two said. You see, Miss Peters, we followed Nick Connors here. All right, Denny, you may show them the way out. Delighted, sir. Miss Peters, Connors, you and the others in this scheme will be starting off soon in a race run by justice. A race for your lives. And believe me, in a contest like that, there won't be any ringers. I'll be back in a moment to tell you about next week's story. Next week, Denny and I visit a seashore resort and find the carnival owner dead on his own scenic railway. Our investigation leads us from attraction to attraction and from murder to smuggling. I call this story, Death Loops the Loop. Be sure to listen, won't you?